Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, and how is everyone doing today? My name is Sharice Johnson Moore. I am your hope builder, lifting you up out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. And it is time, it is time, it is time. It's time for daily devotional for today. Today, we will be talking about 2 Samuel chapter 23, 1 through 39. 2 Samuel chapter 23, 1 through 39, and we're going to talk about David's last words and David's mighty men. David's last words and David's mighty men. So, I want you to get your Bibles, your tablets, your cell phone, however you may be reading the word, and come on and let's learn about David's life, David's journey, David's last the last things that he does in his life because now he is old he is up to an age and we want to pay homage to King David alright come on now let's get busy Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore. I am the owner CEO of LBM TV. It is a streaming channel that can be located on the C1 Media Network Smart TV app. This app can be located on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Android TV, and Google TV. We have advertising spots available for businesses that want to advertise their products or services on our channel. We have an audience of 4.25 million viewers daily reaching 70 plus countries. We have advertising packages to fit your company's needs. We would love for you to join the LBM family. You can reach us through our email address, lbmtvmedia at gmail.com or call us at 724-570-1153 for further details. Talk to you soon and let's advertise, advertise and tell the world what you are made of. everyone let's get into this word for today we are reading second samuel chapter 23 1 through 39 and it reads now these be the last words of david david the son of jesse said and the man who was raised up on high the anointed of the god of jacob And the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his words was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning, When the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure, For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it now to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them 
must be fenced with iron, and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmonite, Tachmonite, that sat in the seat, cheap among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against eight hundred whom he slew at one time. And after him was Elysia, the son of Dudu, the Ahohite, Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, Shammah the son of Aegi, the Hararite, Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the thirty chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Raphael. And David was then in an, in an hold. And the garrisons of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break, break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out on unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruel, was chief among three. And he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them, and had the name among three. Was he not most honorable of three? Therefore he was their captain. How be it he attained not unto the first three. And Benani, the son of Jehoadab, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a good, goodly man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things 
did Benaniah the son of Jehoadab and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three, and David set him over his guard. And Asael, the son of Joel, was on was one of the thirty. Elhinan, the son of Dudu of Bethlehem. Shema the Haradite, Haradite, Elika, El, 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 the Harodite, Helas, the Peltite, Ira, the son of Ikish, Ikish, the Toite, the Tikoite. Abiza, the Ahithrotite, Me Bunai, the Hushite, Hushite, um, Zelum, the Ahoite, Mahari, the Nitophite, Toophite, Helam, the son of Benai. A no toabite, Etiel, the son of Reba, out of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Benani, the Pyrothite. He died of the brooks of Gaish, Abio, Abiliabon, the Arbathite, Asmavit, Vith, the Barhemite, Eliam, the Shaalbinite, of the sons of Jason, Jonathan, Shimei, the Heritite, Anahim, the son of Sherei, the Hirite, Elipheolet, the son of Ahashbi, the son of Maichuptite, Eliam, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel, the Gileonite, Hezra, the Carmelite, Pariah, the Arbite, Eagle, the son of Nathan of Zobah, Zobah, Benai, the Gadite, Zalit, the Ammonite, Nahari, the the Erothite, Amabera to Joab, the son of Zerua, um, Ira and Ithrite, Garib and Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, 30 and 7 in all. I have just read 2 Samuel chapter 23. 1 through 39. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for allowing us just this day, just this second, just this minute, just this hour, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you do for us, and all that. Just everything, Lord. Everything. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. For your words are mighty and they have value and they have strength and they have they have so many things with your feelings, with your mind, with your thoughts. Lord, we know we must stay in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen and amen.
Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore, and welcome to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Do you have products and services that you want to tell the world about? Well, I have an offer for you. Did you know that when you make a 60 minute voiceover ad and place it in podcasts, that it increases your business awareness by 50% in the marketplace? Voiceover ads aren't that expensive. They range from $15 to $25. It all depends on where you place your ad in the podcast. So come on in and place your ad on Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast and tell the world what you have to offer. You can reach me at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. Come on, let's tell the world what you are made of. All right now, all right, let's get into this chapter. So, we see that King David is saying his last words. And in his last words, he talks about all the men that have gone to battle on his behalf. And the ones that he know that he can trust to have his back. That is our question for the day. How many people can you know offhand that you can count on to fight your battles for you in your life? How many people do you know in your life that will go to battle on your behalf in your lifetime? I that was the one thing that I had to um, deal with in my life uh, growing up because I grew up by myself alone even though I did have sisters and brothers and things of that nature, but we weren't, we, we didn't, we weren't raised together. And growing up in a household where you're, you're uh, raised by two elderly people, two elderly adults, and, and the constant reminder of this this saying my granddad used to say everybody you think is your friend is not your friend and I used to always wonder why he would say that and as time went on I I I kind of really understood the message because When you have friends or you know somebody has your back, that they will cover for you, that they will have your best interests at heart. They will not betray you by talking about you behind your back or backstabbing you or using you or anything of that nature. And I I kept wondering, I was like, why he keeps saying that? And my prime my prime example was one day we was I wanted to go across the street to my friend Sandy house. And Sandy and her parents, you know, they were uh she had a she had a brother, older brother, and was other kids in the neighborhood and stuff like that. And one day he pointed out, he said, you know, if they were really your friends, they would come to your house sometimes. If they was really your friends, they would come over to your house sometimes. And my grandma would say, my grandma would say, don't be putting yourself off on people. And 
I used to wonder why she said that too. And it dawned on me as the older I got, I realized that I had to be very picky about the people I had in my life and the people I chose to be around. Okay? And and it is it is a thing where you know in your life you have people that are in your life that will speak up for you um people that will uh hold you accountable as well but they will speak up for you they would they will go to bat they will defend your honor they will defend your you as a person because they truly have your back and it's very seldom that you can find people that'll do that. Very seldom. Because um, it is where well, over a length of time they show themselves approved. And I, you know, will learn this lesson um, very hard in life about others that when I needed them, they were not there. When I, I was always, you know, the one that supported the friend and always, you know, okay, if you need this, if you need that, if you need this, if you, you know, you need help with this or that. And then when I asked them for help, it was like, um, what? Huh? What? Okay. So, and, you know, yes, it, it, it hurt sometimes. It hurt when people didn't support me or people didn't, uh, uh, you know, come and just spend time with me. It was already, it, you know, where after a while, you know, the person showed, showed me who they were, okay? They showed me who they were as individuals because God, the way my grandma raised me was not to be a selfish person. <clears throat> she was always giving and always, you know, well, I'll give you some food, if you need some clothes, if you need to wash, take a shower, if you need this, if you need that, if you need this. And my my friendliness and my uh, having that empathy and sympathy for others will always get me attracted by the wrong people. Because in their minds, it was, let me use her. Let me go ahead and get what I can get out of this person. When I, And then th- this would be the shocker for me. When I didn't placate into their plans, placate into their plans, it would always be, okay, well, um, they would turn on me. And I was like, really? You know, like, really, you know? And sometimes in life, God, God sends you these people as lessons. And the lesson is, how do you pick the right people to be in your life that'll have your back and go into battle for you on your behalf, in your name, uh, to, to stand up for you, to speak up against the, the stuff that's coming against you or, or the battle that this other person, outside person wants to bring to your table and cause a ruckus and cause a strife and cause all these problems and stuff and no one uh, have anything to say on your behalf. And, you know, in that, in that, in, in my lifetime, now I'm 51 years old and I had to learn to pick wisely. I had to not be so fast to call people friend. You know, you know. Sometimes we 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 might sit with somebody for hours or go, hey, how are you doing? And, and spend time with them or whatever, whatever. But in the instance, uh, what things you know? What things are you doing in that spent time? And I had to evaluate and uh, observe. And that is some of the things that, you know, 
David observed. He observed his his men, certain men in his, the mighty men that went with him, that stayed with him, that fought for him. He names each one of them that have went out and fought battles for him on his behalf because of his, uh, for his honor and for, uh, to, you know, I said, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. And the Lord put people in David's life to help him through the journey of life and have people that have stability. He put people with stability in his life. He put people that were undaunting in his life. And a lot of the men that he is uh, with before his before his passing, they show they self approve. They did they didn't they didn't ask uh they didn't ask why you want me to do this. They didn't uh doubt what he asked them. They just did it. And they showed they self approve even from him fighting, you know, where he's fighting Goliath. And the men from that point on stay with him. Joab, Joab is a prime example of the one that stayed with him the whole time. And stuck by him regardless of what was going on outside of King David. Even when it came to his son Absalom. And that was kind of a thing you know, well, okay, should I fight? He didn't drive, didn't didn't fall to, he didn't yield, he didn't say, no, nah, I'm not doing that. You know, it was like, look, we got to go defend King David. And even in your time of struggle, which King David had, he still had people that had his back. They didn't leave him because they they didn't leave him because uh, he had to leave the kingdom or flee. They helped him flee. They helped him get away. And when you know when he had the coup with Absalom, and he, they had his back regardless if he was in the kingdom or not. You know, and how many people got your back? How many people got your back even in the low places? Even in the low places, the, the low places that you have to deal with in the low places, when you don't have nothing, when you had to run and you had to be homeless, you have to live in the woods and, and you uh, and you uh, go through this transition of not being in a place of stability, even when you're in your rocky places, even when you're in your destitute places, do you still have people that have your back? And it's good to acknowledge those people. Good to acknowledge those people. When when you feel like you are alone, you look around you and you're like, okay, they still here. Oh, okay. I, you know. And and it is so poignant that cherish the ones, cherish those that that stand up for you cherish those the ones that have your back and not gonna disrespect you and not talk about you not gossip and then skin my grandma say skin and grin in your face with that two-faced stuff you know um and you know just ooh, you know it, it brings back a lot of memories for me to talk about this it brings a lot of memories you know well now I don't really consider myself having friends. I have associates. I associate with you, but I am very, 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 very picky about who I call my friend. Because I have seen a friend of mine, I thought it was my friend, but then they did something and they showed me they were not in my corner. I've, been, I've had a lot of experiences like that in my life, and um, and 
it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. And like, and then they got this other saying that everybody can't go with you when you level up. When I left that old life, a lot of people that I thought were my friends, I stopped associating with. I stopped even calling them my friends. I stopped visiting them. I stopped dealing with them because that that old me didn't do drugs. That old me didn't smoke weed. That old, that did well, I say the new me. The new me didn't drink. The new me didn't smoke weed. The new me didn't uh, sell my body anymore. The new me... Uh, didn't gossip and talk about backstab people, you know, and, you know, and sometimes that's just like when King David was with the Philistines and they was fighting Israel and they told him, no, you don't need to go into this battle because you'll be fighting your own people. And so they sent him away and uh, this is where he was with uh, Saul, and and you know, and, and after he left Saul, he decided to go ahead, he'll go with the Philistines, and he was like, I'm gonna go ahead and fight with them then, you know, since uh, don't nobody really cherish or value my 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 me as a person uh, over here in Saul's camp, where I was supposed to be one of them, but they, you know, he turned against me, and I had to leave, and. Then the Philistines tell him, no, you can't go fight this battle. You can't fight, you can't be a part of this battle. So David went on his way and 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 God led him on a path of finding out who he had in his corner and who he didn't. And God guided him through all the steps, all every everything he was going through, God guided him. And in having to pick the best people to be in his life that I had his back. So my question for you today is, who are you picking? And who are you picking to associate with? Who are you picking as to call them your friend? And who are you picking to have to fight your battles with you? Who are you calling friends? Who are you associating with and who are you picking to fight your battles with you? Or who shows up for you? I say it like that. Who shows up for you when it's your when it's a battle coming up coming, when it's time to put the rubber to the road, who is gonna go with you to really get uh to have your back, to cover you, to pray for you, to uh give you sound advice uh you know it, no it, the battle doesn't have to be the kind of battles that we fight sometimes they're mental sometimes they're physical and sometimes they're spiritual and you have to understand uh, who you can take with you in each of these battles who can you take into the battle with you you know, who's going to stand out, who's going to do the most, who's going to have, you know, it's just like building a team, a team for a business. Okay, well, you know, this person does good graphic arts design, this person does good administrative system work, this person does good social media, this person does um, uh, content creation, things of that nature. And you know, you could tell by a person's work work ethic how much they cherish you. Are they they working? You know, they going in. All right, I gotta put this put this um, put this uh, syllabus together for her class, and let me go ahead and get on it, and so she won't have to ask me. Uh, come to me and say, "Where's the syllabus at?" And things like you know, it's about they're stepping up to the plate and doing their part. They know their role and they know their parts. That's the same thing as going into a battle, uh, uh, a battle uh, with a friendship, uh, 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 a friendship that you might have your, uh, you know, up, ups and downs, but you know you still that person still got your back. You might not agree with the person, but they still there. And it's just, 
deal. You know, who got your back? Who got your back in whatever you're doing? Whether you're writing a book, whether you're starting a business, whether you're going on a, a journey, uh, going to college, or even just in life. Just in life. Who got your back? You know, that's the question. You know, and as we can see, sometimes the battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. And a lot of the battles that we have, we have to give to God. I know I'm going through one right now, Lord. Mm -hmm. But I know I have to give it to God because I know he's the only person that the the only, 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 only one that I know I can count on in this battle. And, you know, and we can't we can't fight everything by ourselves. We can't do everything on our own. We can't do everything on our own because we'll be tired, worn out, you know, looking raggedy. And, you know, we're going to need somebody to hold us up, you know, like Moses. And, and you know, where he had, you know, his the two, the two men to hold him up while he was, you know, praying, you know. And so it had to have his back, you know. And as you see through the, through the book you find out who has each other's backs. That's another lesson that you learn when you read about King David and any one of these mighty men in the Bible. That they had a sidekick that won't go in nowhere. They was there. They was the good, the thick, the bad, the ugly. They were there. So, my question for you today is, what battles are you giving to the Lord and what battles do you know that you can get to other people that can help you? Hey, I want to thank you for listening to Daily Devotional today. I thank you so much for everything that you do. And we will talk again on Daily Devotional. Thank you and have a blessed day. Authors, 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 have you written a book? Are you an experienced author or a new author? Well, I've got news for you. Authors Excerpt Sunday is the perfect start to growing your audience awareness with the public. Authors Excerpt Sunday has interview spots available in many forms. Live broadcasting done on all social media outlets, television, and podcasting. We would love to help you tell the world about your book. You can reach us at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. And let's tell the world about your book. everybody hello all right all right all right so this has been our time together i know i know i know i know i know especially when it's really getting good so my thing is you come back tomorrow and you will get another dose of your daily devotional that's just plain and simple so, my name is Sharice Johnson Moore, and I have been your host for today for Daily Devotional. I want to greatly appreciate that you have taken out your time to come and spend time and take out time in your day to listen to the podcast, okay? If you want to make sure that this podcast thrives and levels up, you can donate a financial contribution of $0.99, cents, $4.99, or $9.99 cents to go to anchor.fm.com backslash Sharice Johnson Moore backslash support. Okay? That's anchor.fm.com backslash Sharice Johnson Moore backslash support. Okay? So, I greatly, greatly appreciate 
everything that you do. And I want you to have a marvelous day. I know you're going to have a marvelous day. I know God's going to bless you because he's already blessed you if you woke up this morning. Okay, that's the blessing in itself, baby. Okay, I love you and talk to you on the next daily devotional.